Right? Anything I do in class is on GitHub immediately afterwards. So you see all my notes. Just to show you, if you go to Notes Archive, since I started GitHub at Seneca, you see it's, these are all the semesters that I have over here. And if you go to any of them, you'll see exactly this is section A, and this is what happened on September 17th. These are the notes that I have over there. You can look at every single thing that I do in class right on GitHub with the code and everything, and you can pull the code down, test it, run it, do whatever you want to do with it. So um, it's a good idea not to distract yourself by doing that. Anything I do in class, uh, it's going to be over there. Next, uh, there are going to be something on YouTube. It's, it's, they are all on, the, uh, on your, um, what should we call it? Um, not Tom Cruise, but Farlad <coughs> Workshop Zero. Okay? So if we do that, there you go. That's 2020. I put you the, I put the, uh, the link over there, so it's because every semester I have something new coming up. Um, so it's something like this. So if you take a look at the playlist, so it shows you, for, uh, this is not the one, let me just go through the link over here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if you go to uh, OOP244, NAA, and MBB notes, this is where everything's going to happen in our class, okay? So... And workshop zero is right there, and you can go to the uh, link over here. I hope it's updated. If it's not, I'll update it. No, it's not. I'll update it to, to 2227. It tells, oh, it is maybe. Yeah, it is. So <coughs> it is. Uh, so uh, installing Visual Studio 2022, how you do it, then how you do Git installation, how you install Putty, creating a GitHub account, setting up GitHub profile, how you're going to do all those things. Little by little, I go through it. Tortoise Git installation, I'll tell you exactly what it is today so you'll know. Um, uh, creating an SSH key on your, on your computer and add it to GitHub so you don't have to enter user ID and password every single time. It does a handshake with GitHub and it identifies your computer as a safe, safe computer to get connected to your account so you don't have to do that. Then you're going to... Um, uh, uh, do the workshop zero, which is essentially on workshop zero what you do is you're going to create a private repository on Git. What is a repository? You know what Dropbox is? You know what, uh, what is that Win uh, Microsoft thingy there? What do they call it? Uh, oh, OneDrive. OneDrive. You know what OneDrive is? This is an intelligent OneDrive. What does it mean? Every single project that happens on planet Earth that is worth something is on Git. OK? No exception. OK? What is, you know what Linux is, right? Linux uh, is the largest open source project in the world. You know that. Uh, anybody knows what is uh, open source? Full duplex communication. I have to remind you of that. Now we are in class. I'm going to pick on you. I'll ping everybody if you've been in my classes before you, you, know, you saw the videos. I keep uh, pulling people to give me answers. Now in here, I'm going to get you. So. Um, uh, open source, who knows what's open source? But what's open source? Open source is like available to everyone. Anyone can use that source. Anyone like, can use that source. So uh, what's, what's collaborate, on. collaborate on it. So what's good about it? Like if we have open source, what do you think? If everybody have access to a source code, how do you make money out of it? You can? No, just blast your ideas, whatever. Just imagine you are writing a program. That program source code is available to everyone. Then what's good about it? Everybody can everybody can look. So it's yeah, there are lots of benefits. So so you're not gonna have a bug because there are gonna be gazillions of people out there looking at your source code, seeing if what you are doing is uh, it has a bug or not. If it has a bug, they let you know that you did something wrong and they, they fix it. Uh, so you can fix it or you can Give them access to your code to fix it uh, under your supervision. They can add something to your code and, uh, and fix your code, uh, which is essentially uh, called bugs. They say bug, they issue a bug. Um, and uh, people make suggestions. It would be nice if you add this and that, things like that, every single time. And everybody eyeballs your code. 
The good thing is that, the, that like one of the ways that open source works, first of all, it's those big companies that they just need people to be in their site, like Google. Chrome is an open source browser. You can download its source code. You can put it on your computer called Guitar Source, Guitar's website, and then publish it under your own name easily. Of course, nobody's going to use yours because Google is there with lots of support. Nobody's going to look up. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that it's open source. And if there's a bug in there, people are going to talk about it, and they're going to fix it. How do they mon make money? Either it's Google, because they have a search engine. They want people to be on their site. So they create a browser so you can do it the best so you don't go after other people. As a matter of fact, the engine, because it's open source, now Microsoft Edge is actually Chrome. They are actually using uh, Firefox. It's Chrome. These all have the engine of Chrome. It's like the engine is the same. They just put another body, like one paints it red, the other one doesn't. <laughs> They're all the same, OK? So that's one. Number two, support. What do they do? You write your code. You put it over there. You give the application to anybody who can use it. Well, because you are the builders, you know how to support it the best. So people download the software for free, start using it, buy the support from you. That's Big Blue Button. How many people know what is Big Blue Button? Don't be afraid. You can say, I'm not going to ask a question. I just want to know how many of you knew. OK, Big Blue Button is, um, for those who don't know, it's like uh, Microsoft Teams, but it's built for education. And, I, and, it's, it's, and I'm telling you that because I'm one of those people who actually worked on that project. And my students from OP345 actually got hired to do coding. And four of them right now are working for Blindside Networks at Ottawa. That thing that you see has Seneca code in it. OK? And that's how open source works. And now Seneca has it, although we have Black Bull, Ultra, Schmultra, Team stuff. But Big Blue Button is our home thing, so we can use it, right? And, it, and if anything goes wrong with it, I just open an issue, they fix it, and we have a better thing every single day. You don't have to talk with a ginormous application uh, a company like Microsoft to say your Teams is doing this and that. Good? So now we know why open source. All these things, Linux and all these stuff, are on Git. Git actually was made by Linus Torvald, the person who made Linux. After Linux got exploded and everybody started bringing code in, it became difficult to manage merging all these uh, stuff together. So he sat at home again in his basement, and he said, I'm going to make something so we can manage code. Many people can work on the same source code, collaborate, and intelligently we can merge the code to have a better software. And he called it Git. Then a company called GitHub said, Git is open source. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create this, put this vast amount. Remember, from support you get money. I'm going to put this vast number of servers, install Git on it, give you a user-friendly interface so you can actually put your code on a safe place on the cloud, which is a Git repository. The difference is that with something like, I keep forgetting that Microsoft thingy, uh, OneDrive. OneDrive thingy that you have on Microsoft, you cannot, they are trying to, but you cannot keep track of who has done what. But with Git, you literally, create a directory on your computer. Actually, you create a repository on GitHub. You clone it on your computer. Everybody knows what cloning is, right? You clone it so you have two copies of the same thing, one on your computer, one on GitHub. And these two things, it's an uh, application. A Git application is a distributed application, which means every single copy of Git works exactly like the other one. There is no client and server. They are all fully functional Git applications. So you start working in the directory of your repository on, on your computer, and you keep committing your changes to the repository. I keep using the names that are keyword in Git, so when I say, talk about it, you know what does it mean. So you keep adding and committing your changes to your repository as you are going. You are working on your workshop. You're working on your project. You keep doing that, and you say, commit, I'm going to lunch, commit. Then you come back. The next day you are saying, oh, I did this function. This function is finished. Commit. So every single turning point, 
that turning point should, could be you are going to washroom, or could be the workshop is done, or could be this function is completed and tested. You keep committing all these things in your, in your repository, okay? And then you hit a block and say, I can't do this anymore. Something's wrong, I can't fix it, I need Fardad's help. You push everything to Git, so all the history of what you have done will be pushed into Git, and Git becomes an identical thing as you have. So you sync the two repositories. Then you send me a message, Fardad, I have problem here and here, I tried to do this and this, it didn't work, how do we work on it? We go on Microsoft Teams, I open up the uh, screen sharing, but I'm not gonna see your screen, I show you my screen. I'm gonna pull all your changes from your repository because I'm gonna ask you to add me as a collaborator. I will have your code in front of me. I check it, test it, fix it right in front of you so you see that what is the process of things being fixed. <clears throat> then I push it back into Git. You pull from Git and you have all the changes applied to your thing, now your workshop works. What you do, you tell to Git what was changed. Git <clears throat> puts all two source codes left and right and shows exactly what the differences are. And you go through the differences, reflect on me, reflect on it for me, on your workshop. You help me, this and that, you change this and that, this one by mistake, and you're good to go. That's how I help people in this class. It's not like I'm sitting over there and trying to get into your computer and fix your code like that. We do it professionally like everyone else in the computer world. You can do that, okay? And that's how we're gonna take care of it, okay? Uh, there is an open source book because Git is open source. The Git book is open source. So you can say that the, the, the Git book, actually, you, if you type it on the internet, it comes up. It's from O'Reilly and it's an open source book. So you can actually see your book, see the book over here. Read for, if you read first two chapters, you know more than me. Git is an amazing thing, like, and um, some people say nobody knows exactly how it works. I use just few features to work with it to help students. So I give you a kickstart. <clears throat> if you read chapter six, I think that's about GitHub. So, and when I say read three chapters, it's not like you're reading the miserables. You're actually it's the miserables. You're not reading like a big. Uh, book is just, I don't know, 20 pages here, 40 pages there, and um, yeah. So that's how we're going to work on it. Do we understand what workshop zero is? Do we know one? Do we know two? Questions, go. Oh, oh you were just doing this. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, go ahead. So the question is, the reason I repeat the question because I have the microphone, when I bring my own stuff, then you guys have a microphone too. So the question is, uh, are we submitting through GitHub? No, we are submitting it under another open source application. That open source application is called Submitter. That Submitter is installed on Matrix. Some crazy guy wrote it, okay? And uh, this Submitter thingy uh, gets your thing, compiles it, makes sure everything's good, and then emails it to me. So, all right. To develop, <clears throat> final product is sent to me via, via submitter. And the code for submitter is here if you want to see how it works. So if you go uh, uh, GitHub, Fardad, submitter, there you go. That's the source code for it. Knock yourself out, okay? And it is written with end of OP244 knowledge. Maybe a little bit of OP345 knowledge. So this doesn't have some crazy stuff in it. When you look at it, you'll see. Okay? Yes. So uh, again, it's, it's going to be on your, um, um, I'm going to make a few changes in the announcement. Uh, for now, set the primary email of GitHub to your Seneca because you are mostly involved with it with Seneca. After you get graduated, you change it to whatever you want. Okay? But pr when you do primary, uh, set your primary uh, on GitHub, set your primary email to Seneca, what happens is that when you watch uh, um, a repository, watching a repository means asking GitHub to tell you if something's changed. So you say, watch workshops repository. <clears throat> 
And if I post something, immediately GitHub sends you a message, Farad made this change and it's there, there. You go over there, oh, there we go, new workshop. Or workshop is something very fluid. We install, we, we, we uh, design it, we give it to you, it may have problems. So halfway through it, I may change something. Oops, this is a bug, so we have to fix something. Uh, when I do that, you receive an email from GitHub saying that this change was made to such and such and do such and such, okay? So thank you for the question. So again, the question was, do we do our, uh, use our Seneca emails? But you can have many emails, so add other emails underneath. Any other question? Is there any actually uh, I, 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 I said that submit it to me, send me something, and I'll find out if you have done it. Or I put actually a mark for it to encourage people to do it, but now I'm saying I'm not going to help you if you don't have it. So <laughs> you have to do it. So. Uh, uh, but no, uh, it used to be something that I ask you to, um, oh, when you add me as a collaborator, I'll notice because I received something that uh, uh, somebody requested uh, to be, for me to be a collaborator. Okay, so, okay, so uh, amazing question. The question is that should we add you as uh, a collaborator for everything that we do? You create one repository, call it Seneca Works. One repository. In that repository, create subdirectories, project, work, whatever you do for your OP244, put it in that one. Because I'm a collaborator to that, two things happen. Number one, I can see how actively you are working in C++ and your OP244. So if tomorrow you have 79% and I want to decide to see if it's an A or remains a B+, I'm going to go to your GitHub repository and see how active you were, okay? If I see you do one push, two months later another push, it means your friend is giving you the code and you're putting it over there, right? So then that 79% remains 79%. I never use it for negative purposes, ever. I never make your 80% 79, ever. Okay, but if I'm gonna grant you something, I'm gonna take a look and see if you deserve that bonus or not. And, and it kind of shows me what your behavior is, so that's good. Anything else? All right, uh, initially things are gonna go wrong and you won't be able to do this and that, so contact me on Microsoft Teams. I have office hours set, so if we go to if we go to, uh, do I have my token? Yes, I do. Let me see if it actually logs me in or I have to enter the duo schmiggly dingy thingy. Um, yeah, two factors thingy. Okay, enter a passcode. Two, six, nine, nine, zero, zero. Oh yes, they they signed in all the time. I don't know because they know I'm a very cool guy. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I seriously don't know. I don't know. Every every like uh, people in IT down there, they make decisions to make Seneca secure, and we don't get notification. I'm doing it, it happens, so I'm doing it. I have no idea. Don't quote me on anything, I, I really don't know. Okay, so courses, we're gonna come, we are section B, correct? This is section B, right? Anybody's thinking? Seriously, you don't know if you're section B or not? I think we're section B. All right, so. Section B, so let me go to student view, make sure everything's good, switch to student view. So I'm going to ask, so yeah, so welcome to OP24, you have all the good stuff over here. I'm going to add a few things about helping over here and the GitHub process. So you're going to have all these things. Please go through these announcements and see how everything works. Um, and uh, schedule. So if you go to weekly schedule over here that I'm going to bring up later, this is not supposed to be down here. Uh, so these are the uh, office links that I have. And if you click on this one, it brings up Microsoft uh, Teams. And you'll notice that you're already a member of a team called Fardad's office, okay? So three years later when it comes up, probably that's going to be another duo thingy that I have to do. Uh, enter password. 
See? Now it's asking me. It heard you. <laughs> Sign in. Sign in incorrect. Anybody knows my password? <laughs> <laughs> And here comes Duo. There's something they'll give you on your cell phone. And I hate that. My cell phone is cluttered as is, so. Oops. This one says, remember being in 15 days, actually. So. All right, so yeah, so when we get in here three years later, when it logs in, you will see that, hmm, can't find that theme, so which means I have to fix it. So, so let me fix that theme. I thought I fixed it. Not the fastest connection. Dun, 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 dun. Really? Um, okay, let me open it again. Teams. Teams. Anyways, I fixed that link and it's, it's going to redirect you to the, the team that I created. For some reason, it doesn't come up here now. Let me see, go for chat. No. Oh, there you go. Something's coming up. There you go. So uh, it's going to be this one. I'm going to bring it up. I changed it because first I put a classroom, and then it gave me lots of bells and whistles that we didn't need, so I changed it. So let me just get the link right now, and, and, and I'm going to fix it. So uh, get the link to Teams, copy. So this is going to be the place that you're going to go to, and we're going to start the conversation over here. So what happens over here, I'm going to give you a welcome schmiggly dingy over here, so you're going to have it. And then after that, every time you have a problem, you can simply post it over here. If someone helps someone else, I'll write down. I'll make sure if you help someone, thank you. Please do. I don't mind, OK? We have a regulation for that that I added to our uh, uh, workshops and submittables, so you'll see what's going on. So if you help each other, I'll thank you. But if it wasn't fixed and I see the message, then I'll respond to it. And then we're going to go. So everybody's going to post their problems over here in one big thing. And we all see and we all reply to each other and help. And my other section is going to join. So it's not only you. It's the other section of OP2442. OK? And if I hit it earlier than those, then I'll help you. Or we'll do it through GitHub and all those good stuff that we talked about. Uh, cheating. Um, you're allowed to cheat as long as you tell me that you cheated. <laughs> That's a joke. But, but what happens is that, so what happens is this. Let's say you have the project. It's two days to due date, and you have 500 other things to do, and it's this piece that doesn't work. So what you do, you can simply ask your friend to give you the code for that part. You insert that code in your code. You simply give the credit to the person who wrote that part. OK? So in the in the source code at the top, in the comments, you will say, John Doe gave me this code, this part from this line to this line, I did it. And in your reflection to add it to, if you have a reflection, if not only in that one. And I'll give thanks to John Doe. And you, instead of 100%, you're going to get 90%. Because you, that 10% of the work is done with someone else, that's what's going to happen. Okay? So you only lose mark for the piece that you didn't do. But Oh, yo, 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 if I catch you not telling me you have done something, and sadly in past years, for the first time in 20 years, after a pandemic, I keep reporting people every semester, OK? Please, OK? And this is only for submittables, not for tests. And when I caught somebody, I was like, you told us that we can do that. I said, no, not in tests. You cannot do it in tests, in projects, workshops. Uh, submittables, anything that you submit. But for quizzes and tests, no, you can't do that. You have to do it by yourself, OK? Quizzes are done weekly. We do the quizzes every week. And uh, it's going to be approximately 80% of the questions is on what I already talked about and 20% on what I'm going to talk about, OK? So next week's material, 20% of the mark comes on that. I'm not going to ask you programming questions on those. 
You just go read it as you are reading a storybook, so you understand when I say inheritance, what does it mean? When I say virtual, what does it mean? So I'm going to say, what is virtual? You're going to say, it means this. I don't know how to do it, but it's this. Okay, so you, I, I, it kind of hopefully forces the students to look on what I'm going to lecture before they come in. And I don't want you to study it. I want you to look at it, because if you make your mind in an incorrect way, it's much more difficult to fix it. Okay, grasp an idea of what is about to come, and when I talk about it, then go fix it in your long-term memory. Okay? Y y uh, yes, my lady. Yes, we'll talk about that in two seconds. Not the textbook, but yeah, you were saying? Same question. So what happens is that <clears throat> there is this book. We are supposed to do it OER. We are supposed to do it open source. But I was too busy. I couldn't finish it. I, I haven't even started it yet. Hopefully this semester I'll start migrating the notes that Chris Shavinsky wrote to the OER. For now, it's on good old server that you have to get connected to Global Protect to be able to see it. But because that's a pain for students, this is what I did. So if you go to the GitHub, not this one, where is it? Did I? Oh, where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? For that, I should have some connection over here too. No? Um, uh, uh, OP244. 244. GitHub Seneca. Yeah, so. If you go over here, this is what I did. You see in here, I'm saying downloadable OP244 notes. So I literally downloaded the HTML and all these relative stuff, and I put it in zip files in here. So you can download it on your computer, put it in weeks, and then when you click on it, so this one is the introduction and welcome. That's one zip file. Put this zip file, unzip it. There is a directory, HTML5, and a directory with the same name. Put them side by side. You can open it up on your computer, and that becomes your textbook. Okay, but is there a textbook for C++? Um, it's difficult to, um, I always have difficulty to create a, a, a text, uh, uh, to assign a textbook for, for, for lecture. The reason is that books are like your girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, and husbands. They are, every person who wrote a textbook has a taste that is good for her, but not good for him. So if I assign a textbook and say this is the best, in my opinion, she's going to say, this is horrible. It's going to say, this is amazing. So what I would do, you have the notes. It has everything that you want in those notes that we have over here. But what I suggest, after a week has passed, two weeks has passed, that you kind of are involved with C++ now, go to chapters, indigo, whatever you go and get five C++ textbooks, put it in front of you, pinpoint a po topic that you have trouble with. Go back to the index, uh, to the uh, index they call it, right at the end of the book. So you go over there and, and you find that topic and read that topic in those five different books. See which one you understand the best. That's your book, okay? That's you. So, and the good thing is that from chapters, you get it for two weeks, you don't like it, you give it back for another one. Okay, I don't want you to stop with, because C++ is a dinosaur language in computer history, because computers progress pretty fast, right? C++ is an ancient language, and there are so many different texts and stuff. Make sure that what you get is C++ 17 or higher, so you have some time to use it. If you get C++, C++ 11, it's already obsolete. And not obsolete, it works, but uh, when you're going to OP345, the standard is, C++ 20 and 17, so, um, and we are not using much of those features, but it's a good idea to do that. So that's answer for the, for the textbook. Okay, anything else? Question one, two, sold. Okay, so that's that one. So I'm gonna connect to Global Protect over here. Connect, another one. Again, I need that thing over here. Um, And
All right. So hopefully now that I'm connected to that, I can actually go to the notes. So if I go, if you go over here and come down, week one. So essentially this week one that you see, I copied it in that repository for week week one. Week two, I put it. So what you see in here for your schedule is exactly what you see on GitHub. Of course, if you are connected to Global Protect, and hopefully we are good with it, we could, and it brings it up. So that's what you study for the for the for the week. So and so, uh, in other words, um, this is what you. So the quiz that we're going to do on week two, it's going to be on these, and it's going to be twenty percent of that. And it doesn't matter if I finish the lecture, the quiz is going to be full on it, which means if I start it, and that brings us to our labs. Our labs are not labs. You are not supposed to bring your workshops and start it there. That's not going to work that way. We post the workshop. You start the workshop at home. You bring your problems to lab. Okay? You cannot start in lab because at least 60, 70, 80 percent of the time, I use most of the lab for lecture because I don't want to just read like a and go. And I want I want you to actually understand what I'm talking about. So sometimes we struggle on certain topics. I see student faces and I see they didn't understand what I just said. I stay on it longer, so the lecture takes longer. It's possible that in lab I'm not going to be able to do anything but lecture. Therefore. Uh, Keep that in mind, and remember that we all, you can always get me on Microsoft Teams, and I can help you with your labs at any time. But if, when we are together in the lab, then we can go through that one and, and deal with it too. Okay? So that's about labs. Uh, let me see if there's anything else over here missing. I'm going to switch back to uh, exit on a preview thingy. We don't need that. You just, I just want to see if you see stuff. Uh, so uh, this. Um, uh, weekly schedule and the office thingy that I have over there, I have to fix that link. Um, so in here, I'm going to say get link. Copy it right now, so hopefully it's going to be open properly now. Um, and yeah, so again, and all the things that are posted over here, they are non edited and uh, uh, the things that I say over here, I apologize uh, in advance if I say something that offends someone in any way. I don't mean it. I'm just uh, here to teach. And uh, 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 if I say something wrong, uh, something bad, uh, please uh, let me know. And I'll apologize immediately and we'll continue our lectures, okay? So, um, again, I don't edit anything. Uh, I just record and raw, I put it on, on GitHub. Paste and save. Hopefully, when I click now, it's going to take us to the right place. Yes, all right. And uh, there is another link for it too that you can go to. Hopefully, that works too. If it doesn't, I'm going to fix it. This is Help and Office. So you click over here, it's going to bring it to the same place. So uh, if you want help, you can just go over there and just click and come to the uh, Microsoft Teams and we'll, we'll, we'll be there. Any other question? Yes. Uh, during labs, because you're at computers and I'll do it on Blackboard, right? So I'll give you the, the quizzes on Blackboard. I'm going to stand. You do it. We're done. It's exactly done uh, probably at the beginning or I don't know, end of the lab sometime. So we'll, we'll do that. Oh, the labs. Uh, when is your lab? Try, so I think you're okay. But the other class, their lab is going to be 15 minutes short because uh, I have a lab in building A, and then I think I have another one in building C, and five minutes to go between two. So I have to leave 10 minutes early from lab so I can do the lecture for, for OP345. So that's really crazy, and uh, so, um, so that's going to be a little short. Uh, any questions before we continue? Anything? Yes. Yes. Labs, they have computers, don't they? Oh, they should have. If they don't have a computer, we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, for me, it's first day in school, too. So we already say. So, so we'll see. We'll find out. If I see the first day that's not going to happen, then I'm going to make it offline. So I'll give you. So I'm going to say uh, you're going to have, uh, I don't know, something to do at like 
eight o'clock at night for like 30 minutes, I'll open it and I'll close it, something like that. We'll see what happens, yes. Okay, so it's the, the office hours that you see over here, those are the time that I'm 100% on my computer. Anything other than that, look at the indicator over here and please respect it, okay? If you see it's red, don't. If you see away or if you see it's available, call me, okay? Either away or available, call me. Either I'm at the other side of the room or I'm in the kitchen and I hear the computer, I run upstairs and I get to the computer and I'll call you back immediately or I'll see you called, I'll call you back. And I'll respect your status too. Don't be offline all the time, okay? Sometimes be on, because I see people are offline and they're talking to me. I'm like, really? <laughs> so set your state, like if you don't want to be dis disturbed, put it on do not disturb. Don't put offline. It's like I'm not here. You don't want to, all right? So, so it's, it give me a status so I know what you are. And I don't have time. So if, if you see me available or away at 11 o'clock at night, that's the time. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning, that's the time. If it's 10 o'clock in the morning, whatever, that's the time. I don't care. But those two, not here, but the ones that I actually have, I think, those are the times that I will sit at the computer waiting for you to call. Okay? That, those are 100%. Those, are, uh, those two are promise. The rest, find me. Oh yeah, we can do that too. Yeah, so, so it, that happens all the time. So when I see you over there, you call, then I'm going to say you are available. You say no, and I'm going to say, oh, how about talking like in 45 minutes? And you say yes, that's the appointment. Okay, so we, we decide some time, and, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll take care of it, okay? But again, remember, well, two, two important things, and that's the part that I'm not going to be easy on students. I'm so sorry about that. That is, when you're coming to help, asking for help, I need two pieces of information. What is, if it's about a workshop or a project. If it's concept, please, uh, no problem. Just, we'll, we'll talk, I'll go through it again and again and again until you get it, that's fine. But if it's about any work that you're doing on a computer, you need to bring me two information. First, what is wrong, okay? You can't say, my program doesn't work. Like just, just like, like just imagine, like you go to the doctor, oh, oh, something doesn't work in me. You have to say what hurts, right? So that's the thing. So first of all, you have to say, what does not work? Number two, what did you do to fix it and it didn't help? Okay, that prevents 90% of spam calls. Because many students, because I make myself available all the time, as soon as they see syntax error, they call me. Okay, don't do that. Please try to fix it yourself. The most important skill that you should acquire in programming is debugging. Bad news, 5% of the time you are programming, 95% of the time of your life you are debugging. Okay? That's what it is. Unless you're some genius person with identical, but I don't know, photographic memory or some, or some IQ of 900 that you just program and you're done. Uh, other than that, that's, that's our life. I do it all the time, like every single time. Yeah. Uh, that's why I, the, my colleagues always make fun of the version of the submitter program I wrote. It's 0 0.99.8, but it never reaches the one. It's like a limit in algebra. It gets close to the <laughs> one, but it never reaches it. Yeah, so that's that. Um, uh, that's that. Let me just take a look at the uh, announcement to see if I missed anything. And you think of any question that you have. And it's, uh, when is the class? At uh, 12, uh, uh, 125, right? All right. I'm a chatterbus. So I talk, talk, talk like crazy. Oh, please don't come to me. When is the due date for this? When is the due date for that? I programmed that submitter so I don't have to answer that question, okay? Because like one of the sections that is, I don't think it's you, they have their lab on Monday. So I have to make the due dates different for them. It cannot be like yours. Yours is on Friday, which means you're exposed to the lab for around, what, six, seven days before you come to your lab, where the other ones only have two days if they're lucky. So I have to give them some different type of a due date to deal with, okay? Therefore, 
if you want to know what is something due, just do the submit line, dash do and enter. It tells you exactly when is it due, when you're going to get what, how much you're going to lose, everything's going to be in there. Issue that command on matrix and you're good to go, okay? Please do that. The matrix, the matrix uh, thing, uh, submitter has other things too that is very useful. Let me log in as a, as a student. No? Oh yeah, I did. <clears throat> By the way, I have Git, like um, I think in, in those things I'm telling you how to add SSH key to your matrix account. So no more FTP. If you do that over here on, on, on your matrix account, then anything you want to do, you simply do a pull on your repository on matrix and poof, it brings everything from GitHub. You don't need to FTP think, is it text mode, is it whatever? You don't care. You just clone the repository on, on your matrix account and you do a pull. So these are the things that happens on Git. You clone, that's beginning of everything, which means you create a repository on Git, you clone, which means now you have two instances, identical instances on GitHub. Now these two may go out of sync. If yours go ahead of the other one, you push. So you push to Git. Okay, you commit first, always first commit. Add if you have a new file. So if you have a new file, you add, that's logical. If you change a file, you commit and you say what did you change. That commit commits the change to your local repository. A push sends the change to GitHub. A pull receives the change from GitHub. So if you give the GitHub account to me to fix something, now GitHub is gonna be ahead of yours. So you have to pull the changes. Pull means download, push means upload. <laughs> People know that perfectly. Right? So when you want to download new stuff from Git, you do a pull. When you want to upload new stuff into Git, you do a push after a commit. If you push before commit, nothing goes up because nothing's changed. Now, uh, the difference between push and pull and download and upload is that it's an intelligent type of push and pull, which means when it pulls, it only pulls, downloads what's changed. It only applies the changes. For now, you are not expert in Git, so if you want to ask me a question, you push something to Git, and that information goes to Git, you're waiting for me to do something, don't change anything on your repository anymore. Because they go out of sync, then you have to do conflict resolving, which is a little too, too, too rich for our blood, okay? When the same source code is changed in two different places and you want to merge them, if they are within the same lines and Git can't fix it, Git's gonna tell you, hey, there's a conflict. These are the changes. Which ones you want me to insert? And that becomes confusing for you. Of course, after, believe me, two, three months, you're gonna be better than in Git than I am. And I am the worst in Git, don't worry, so you're not that good, but you're gonna be better than me anyway. Okay, so, so uh, do that, but anyway, so, so let's say I want to go uh, uh, tilde, oh, sorry, you have to type my full name over here, there's no other way to do it, uh, farda the so 244, and it, it, in, uh, I use that higher version of the thing, so I use slashes in IPC 144, did you use slash? Oh, oh, so they, they're using it too. So, so 244, say workshop two, part one, okay? And I'll go dash do. So if I do something like this, oh, that dash die, <laughs> dash do, okay? And you do something like this, it's gonna tell me what? Oh, I don't know how to use mine. Uh, submit and dash do. So you see it tells exactly what to do. They say, of course, this is from last semester. So. <laughs> Nothing's there at the moment. But that's what's going to happen. So it tells you what the due dates are. But, and if even the due date is passed or it's not even open yet and you want to check your work, what you do is feedback. Feedback, it means do everything other than submission. So it checks the code, does make sure everything is good, runs the test and everything, and you see everything's good. You're fine. So if you want to test something just to see how it works, it's feedback. So if you do that, it doesn't matter. It's late. So it says dry running. You see that? 
So it dry runs the test. It shows you how everything works. Of course, if I do that, it's going to tell me file.cpp is missing. And if I try to submit it, it's going to tell me it is rejected because it's the due date is passed. And obviously, there are other things that you can do with this. Just click Submit with nothing. It tells you. So if you have a problem with spaces, you don't have time to fix it, dash skip spaces. So it doesn't match the format. If the format is right, but the format is not a match, it still submits it. If you have extra lines, blank lines that you don't want to fix, you don't, you don't know how to fix, do skip blank lines, or both of them, yes. You lose mark, but yes, you don't. Because your output is not a match, you may lose like 10, 15% for not having a perfect output. But it's the five minutes late, and I don't want to be late. Let me do the skip spaces for heaven's sake. I'll get that 85% instead of 100%. Yeah, right? So that's what it does. OK. Uh, anything else? Yes. It's very difficult to give the rubric on this. What do I do in rubric? One space, 5%. Three spaces, <laughs> missing them. <laughs> I'll look at it and see how bad it is. And I'm going gonna, gonna to mark accordingly. If I see you will something crooked like this, then you lose 30%. But if I see only a space at the end of the line that I cannot even see, then you get the full mark. So sorry about that. That rubric is very, very difficult to create. OK? Um, anything else? Any question one? Any question two? Sold. OK. So uh, workshops are a little different what we had on uh, thing. We have two different types of workshops. Uh, workshops before the semester, workshops after the semester. Workshop is before semester, you have essentially two workshops at each week. So your workshop has two parts. Part number one is something that is extremely guided, which means you sit and read the description of the workshop and you do it. Okay? That's part one. So you essentially practice what you learned in class by doing part one. Because it tells you exactly how to do it. Write this, write this for loop, do this, write this F. So it, it's very detailed. Okay? Uh, part two is DIY, which uses, creates a simpler, asks you to create a simpler application, but it doesn't tell you how. And that's what you use the concept for that you learned in part one, and you apply it to part two, and you do it. Okay? It's not going to be an identical thing. It's using the same concept, but it's DIY. So it's open-ended. You can do anything you want in it. As long as the outputs match, I don't care what you're doing. Obviously, there are going to be probably some prerequisites. I'm going to tell you, like, create this function, maybe. Like, these three functions, because I'm writing a tester, right? So my tester needs these three functions to be present. Other than that, don't tell me, can I add these extra functions? Can I? You can do anything you want, OK? And I try to add one module, extra module. Uh, uh, what is a module? Do you remember what a module is from IPC? You're kind of right. You, you, you don't, you're not supposed to know. I haven't taught it yet. Uh, by the way, this, this questions that I'm doing like this that I go and I ask, I start like this. And if you just, you're not in a mood, you simply say pass. Then I'll go to the next victim. OK? <laughs> so you, you don't have to answer the question. I ask, you should simply say pass. I'm going to go to the next one. So you have written uh, programs in many files, right? In IPC 144. It wasn't a single file doing everything in there. OK? Each file is a module. OK? So in our case, in our, in, if for now, each file and its header file is a module. So I'm going to add a module to every single workshop, and I call it, say, tools or utils. And you're gonna have, you can have it as a blank file. Don't do anything in it. Or you have any extra functions that you want. You wrote some function that receives a, a, a string entry very smoothly and nicely, and you want to reuse it in every single workshop, add it to that tools every single time and use it. So I'll add that module for your convenience. So you can use it if you want, OK? Yeah, and we have several modules. And each module is going to, uh, so uh, that module is going to accommodate all the extra things that you want to do. So I'm going to let you file as far as you want. For part two, 
so after the so first six workshops are like, like this, for workshop seven, eight, and nine, and 10, that comes after the study break, you have only one part, the guided part. That's why, because the project is kicking in. Project is one ginormous application you are writing that has around six milestones, okay? So you start from the beginning you to the end, you write an actual application that does something. And every single time I try to come up with some kind of a scenario that happens in real life, like with War of Ukraine, I, last time I did, I think, an aid management. So you can track the aids that you want to collect and ship and how many you want, how many is missing, things like that. I don't know what I'm going to come up this semester I'll, I'll come up with something. But it's, it's going to be a big application, and which each milestone, I'm going to ask you to a specific thing. So milestone uh, one, two, three, and four, you are building up the engine. Milestone five, you, you assemble the user interface for those engines, so your application starts working. Milestone six is the tester in six different submissions because I don't want you to, if you didn't do one thing, not to get the mark. So I'll test single features of your application in every single one of them. So the, like milestone 6.1 tests only listing the goods. Milestone 2 tests only adding a new good. Milestone 3 tests shipping. Milestone 4 tests, so if you do milestone 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and 6.5, then you get uh, the 60, so, so you get 10% uh, for each, something like that. So you don't have to give me a complete project, okay? As long as your milestones are done. I, I think it's five milestones or six, I don't know. Oh, it's four milestones, the fifth one is six different ones, yeah. So you have 10% for milestone one, two, three, and four. They don't need to be timely will give you a suggested due date, and I strongly suggest to try to stick to it. But if, even if you are a week late, you get full mark for it, as long as you submit it within a week of due date. There is no late penalties for it, because it's development. You can always go back and change your milestones. These four milestones you're going to do, uh, and you have to submit it, even if you submit it late. So, if none of these are submitted, you only want to submit the fifth that works, it's not acceptable. You have to submit the first four milestones anyway, okay? You may not get any mark for it, but you need it. That's part of the submission. So each one of those is 10% that the, uh, their timely submission, which is being maximum one week late. Then after that, you get 60% for milestone five, which has six different parts submission, okay? It's just, essentially we had only five milestones and students went crazy because it was very difficult to like make everything work, okay? And you, if you follow, everything works. But for like those 20, 30 percent of students who did do not follow or they're weak at certain spots and they can't do it, it becomes frustrating and I hate that. Okay, so that's why I made it in six different submissions, so you can get 80% even if you haven't finished it. Okay, yes. Everything's personal. But essentially, again, the same rule applies. If something doesn't work, you can borrow the code from your friend and cite it. We call it citation. So you cite the person, this part of the code, I found it from, uh, what is that web beautiful website of yours that you love to go? What is the name? Huh? Stack Overflow, right, Stack Overflow. So, so you go, I like, like, everyone says, which website? I have no idea, what are you talking about? I know yours. <laughs> You've been there, don't tell me. <laughs> All of you have been there, okay? So yeah, so you go over there and you do, uh, that if, even if you get the code from there, it doesn't matter. You can just put it over here and say, this piece of code was borrowed from Stack Overflow. If you explain exactly what that code does, I'll give you your mark. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm like, what is the point of learning computer? Like, you think you're going to write every single piece of code that you have done in your life? No. You're a student. If you learned how certain piece of code worked, mission accomplished. Right? So, so you can, if you can explain it to me, say, I borrowed this piece of code from this. If you borrowed it from a friend and you know how it works, then change it. Right? <laughs> change it, make it your own. You're fine. You can, if you quote that somebody helped me, I really appreciate it, but you can say it's completely my own. This person helped me. 
If the code is similar, that's not the case. I rewrote it and yada, yada, you get your mark. There's no problem with that, okay? Again, we are trying to do civilized type of programming here. I don't want to be your police and try to find criminals. That's not the case. We want to program and learn, and please, let's keep it that way. And that's why when somebody cheats, that really pisses me off, okay? So I'm trying to keep it open so we don't have to be the bad guy. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the project. Midterm test right before the study break, uh, during the lab, on a computer. Okay, we're going to do it that way. Bring your own computers always to the lab because I know your computers work that better than the computers that you have. So if uh, I presume there is no one over here that doesn't have a computer. Or maybe you have a computer but not a laptop. So if you have a computer, bring it to the lab in case the thing doesn't work and you want to connect with your own computer and do your work. Uh, that's, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, and everything may change. Remember that. Maybe I'm going to give you paper. I don't know. But for now, that's what we're going to do. And the final assessment is going to be on week 14. Uh, and again, the same thing during your lab. Uh, you don't have a lab on week because that school is closed. So um, yours probably going to be on week 13. Because your lab is on Friday and 14th is a Wednesday. So there is no, you don't have, your lab is on Friday, you said, right? Another thing that is extremely important that I have to tell you, I apologize, I'm going to murder your names. I am really sorry. I, and I'm telling you, I'm going to pronounce it badly. Keep correcting me. I try to fix it, but I have very bad things. I, I, I had one good thing that was remembering faces that this mask screwed it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, no, that's okay. No, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. Put it up, be confident, put it up. I'm, I am not saying don't take, put your mask on, like, it doesn't matter, uh, but, but that's what I'm saying. So if I, if I don't remember your name, my apologies. We are all Canadian from 50 different cultures, and each culture's name for the other one is just a sound. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like when I say my name is Fardat, how many of you heard of Fardat in your life? It's like, what the heck is that? Your dad is Far? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yes. Or, or my last name, Soleimanlu. You know what does that mean, Soleimanlu? It means a man under the sun goes to the washroom. <laughs> Soleimanlu, right? So, <laughs> so that's, it's a crazy thing. So, yeah, um, um, my apologies again. <laughs> All right, so that's that. So I think we are clear about the, the subject and what we need to do. I have like 20 minutes and we'll talk about, oh, oh well, just to start you up. And as you see, I didn't do any lecture. So next lab that we are coming in is just lecture. All right? Uh, and the other class lose, lost this uh, first session. So yeah, uh, we're going to use our labs mostly for lecture. So don't presume that we're going to, again, remember, you've got to do your lab and then come to lab for questions. Uh, any questions about the about OP244 and I? Any question? One? Any question? Yes. Yes. So when you're using Visual Studio, when your extension is CPP, it automatically switches to C++ compiler. You don't have to worry about it. But if you are on Matrix, then instead of, did you use GCC? Yeah. Okay, now you use G++. So use, or, yeah, so that's, but you don't, when you are submitting, the submitter tells you what is the command line. Don't make the submitter, don't make the submitter make you lazy. Okay, lots of people use the submitter as a compiler. Because it's you. I'm just going to type feedback in composite for me. Why do I have to type all those things now? Okay. See the command line. Do it yourself. When you are going to an interview, they're not going to tell you, compile this code using Fardout Submitter. They're not going to do that. <laughs> okay. They're going to ask you to compile a code on a Linux box. And I'm going to say, sorry, I just used the submitter. Don't do that. Okay. So issue the command to see what it is and find out what the errors are. Every single error message, treat an error message as a teacher. Every single error message and warning that you receive is a new thing to learn. Remember that. Okay, don't treat, treat them as milestones or some blocks that you hate. When you see an error, 
Find something, it's a little riddle, try to fix it. And when you fix it, remember it so the next time you hit it or someone else, you can help fix it. Okay, usually error messages come uh, in a common way. Are we good? All right, we had a break for 15 minutes in front of the door today before coming in, so I'm not going to give you a break if you don't mind. Otherwise, I would say let's go and let's go have a break and come back and so on and so forth. But uh, if you don't mind, if you want to go for a break? Oh, go, go ahead. Okay, um, as a programmer and a teacher who's been in this business for more than three decades, I have never seen two programmers programming the same code exactly the same. It's like a fingerprint. It's absolutely impossible. Okay. So what happens is that uh, I have written something to actually go through your code and, and find matches. It's very simple. Yes. Yeah, just cite it. Tell me I got this code from this book. And, and explain to me how it works. You're, you're, you'll get the full mark. If you get it from a book, it's like you're studying. Can I study? Of course you can study. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're, doing it. you're getting it from a book. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Much appreciated. So, uh, so what do I want to say? Yeah, so to find if, to see if two programs are the same, it's very simple. It's like DNA search. So what you do, you remove all the name of the variables. You get all the keywords of the language. You put them in an array. And you put the other one in an array. Then you get a small segment and you search into it. If it's a match, you make it bigger. If it's a match, the sequence of the codes are the same. They're a copy. Two seconds. Right? It's, there are only 13 keywords in C language. If, for, while, you're just using them. Change all the name of the variables, class names, anything you want. You cannot change the keywords of the language. Therefore, copies are found like that. So um, I don't need to write a program for it. As soon as I look at the goal, I'm like, oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. No, I'm, I'm not joking. It's, it's that easy. Like, and those people who cheat are not the brightest ones. They forget to wipe out the other guy's name. <laughs> now you're worried if the logic is the same? Seriously, like somebody actually comments a piece of code that this code does this and that, and you look at the comment, the comments are identical. The heck with the code. OK, so I'm giving you how to cheat. <laughs> I'm going to have a course for it. OK. All right. so. Anytime you're coming class, this is what you're going to see. Me opening Visual Studio. And this is 2019, and it's working for me, but 2022 is what you're going to use. It doesn't make any difference. Always get the latest version and try to learn how to work with it. Uh, that one is 2022, but it doesn't work. 2020, who works? The laptop doesn't work. OK, so I go create a new project. So this is what happens. OK. And then after that, I'm going to always choose an empty project, C++, empty project, C++. Then I click on Next. Then you go to the directory in which you want to have the stuff that you want to have in. So um, don't just write it randomly anywhere. So in here, I'm going to go to, uh, say, where do I go? Seneca. I should have a Seneca over here. Seneca and 244200. 200. So this is, uh, I haven't used this for a while, so I'm going to go over here, 22, 27. That's our uh, uh, semester. And in here, I'm going to, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to create a, a, a project. But before doing that, I'm going to do this. Take a look. And this is, uh, uh, shows actually how, this shows actually how everything's going to work. So in here, I'm going to go to OP244 notes. You see that? Then I'm going to go to 244200. Then I'm going to come to OP244NAAB. So this is what you are going to do. 
you don't, like lots of people over here come and say download zip, don't do that. Because I have an SSH set in here, uh, I have to first log in, sorry, I think I'm not logged in in here. So I'm first I'm going to sign into uh, GitHub, three years later, four years later, five, there we go. I'm very lucky, I actually had my name. So my user ID is my name. So I'm logged in now, and because I'm logged in, I can actually get SSH link to it. And because I have a key over here that is a mash of the key that I have on GitHub, I simply copy the code, the, the URL in here. This is all in workshop zero, you'll see that, okay? Now I'm gonna come back in to the directory I just created. That is, This PC, documents, Seneca, 2027. I'm going to right click, and this is Tortoise Git now. Tortoise Git is a shell that does all the Git commands that you have to do on command line using your mouse and thing. That's why in those workshops zero, I'm telling you to install this. You don't need to be that nerd at the moment to actually do everything using command line. Everything that you do over here is a single command line that you can execute. But instead of typing git clone, put the path of the repository, and then hit enter, and there, yada, 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 I'm just going to say git clone in here. So I'm saying in this directory, clone. And when it clones, it automatically pastes the thing I copied. And it's going to say load the putty key that is the tortoise git private key that I have. I'm going to click on OK. It negotiates that with GitHub, and the repository is cloned now in here. So the directory that you see over here is an identical directory to what we have on GitHub. You see, IPC 144 review marking pages and stuff, that's the same. By the way, the IPC 144 review that you see over here, if you go to the repository to read me file in May, uh, when I came to, when I started the thing at the beginning of the semester, I put a marathon seven hour review of IPC 144. I started from the beginning, took the students that were starting 244 and taught IPC 144 from beginning to the end. Okay? So when they start, they have, they, uh, the IPC 144 knowledge is refreshed. The recordings are there. Go through the recordings. The recordings, uh, you don't need to like, you don't need to find it right now. If you just go down here, workshop zero, see, I, one, four, four, yada, yada, this was done and this, this is part one. You click over here, the recording is in there, and all the code I have written in that recording, they are all in here. You see that? Code. You click over, and these are the slides that I have used over there. So you can go over there. I strongly suggest, like, it's going to be a marathon. It's going to take six, seven hours, six hours after that. They took me to the hospital. So, <laughs> so, so I'm telling you. So when you're done with that, okay, go, let's start from the morning. Have your coffee. Start two hours. Go through it. Then go take a break. I don't know. Come back. Drink a bottle of beer. Continue. Okay? So, so do something like that and, and go through it. And you can just skip fast forward the parts that you think it's, it's not important and, and go to the next topic as it goes through. So that's that. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so that was just a thing that I forgot to mention. Marking, I'm going to mention too. So you said rubric. I'll, I'll, yeah, look at the marking, you'll see what I mean. <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm going to mention that too, the heck with it. Okay, so, so in marking, if you see over here, you see this codes over here, it says use break, use of break or continue statement in a loop. So break and continue are never to be used in any program ever. The only place that you can use break is in a switch statement. Anywhere else you use a break, that's a big no-no. It's like you went back 30 years in style of programming. Like people are learning how to do AI and you're still in spaghetti code. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. So like when I see something like that, I'm not going to type that. I'm going to send you an email back as a feedback that has this link in it. And when you click in it, it tells you what is the sample code of things that is wrong and how it's supposed to get fixed. And so it gives feedback like, uh, like uh, that's R as like uh, insufficient or empty reflection. Like if you don't put reflection over there, you're going to get this from me. 
So these gives, this gives you feedback. So I'm not going to write. You're going to get links to why you lost the mark for what or why I am picking on your application and say it's not good or whatever. So you see all those things. And these are all from years of teaching. So as I taught, these things that are, that, that if something new happens, it's, I'm going to add it to the end. Okay, so these are all the things that happen. Yes? Comment your code, not the story of your life. Okay, there are two different ones. You can spam your code or you can comment your code. You have a loop, you're going to say, counting through the array elements. That's a beautiful code. But I have written this code to count the elements in the loop so I can see if the maximum of the... If you do that, then it becomes spam. Okay? Don't spam your code. That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Don't spam your code. Comment your code. Yes, by all means. Okay? You know why? Because in reality, three years after you have written your code, you're going to look at your code, you're going to say, who is that effing person who wrote this code? <laughs> and you wrote it. I guarantee that. So if you comment, that comment is not for someone else. It's for you three years from now. Okay? Because every single code that you are writing, you're bind by it. Especially if you have a startup, you have a contract. If something goes wrong in three years, they're going to come and get you. Fix it. And you look at the code, who the heck wrote this? So be very, very careful, OK? And write very nice little comments just to clarify what's happening, if needed. If not, just leave it be, OK? It's required, but not excessively. So if you see you're writing an if statement to see if A is great and B, don't write, checking A is great and if is telling me that, right? Don't over-explain, just things that you think it's not obvious, just a small label at the top. If you do that, I'll bow to you. People even don't do that. OK. So anyway, so now I have this thing on my computer in here. So in that uh, project that I was creating, in here I'm going to go to OP3 for yada yada notes. In here I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it NBB. That is you, right? So that's going to be the name of the uh, directory, and I'm going to say select the folder. So I'm in that folder. I'm going to name the project 01 because it's the first session, first thing that I have. And it is, which month it is? It's September? September. So September 9th. So uh, September 09. That's what I do. It's a ninth oh. So it's September. September 6th, yeah, September 6th, sorry. I am one of those people who cannot multitask. When I think of something, all other things, IQ goes 25, okay? So, okay, so, so, now, so now we know this is the first session, it was September 6th, and I'm gonna say create, that's the project that I'm gonna write the code for today. So you're gonna see that over there, and three years later, it actually creates the project. I'll get into Visual Studio in here, and I'm gonna say, Add new item. We have 10 minutes. And in here, I'm going to say, usually I do prg.cpp. I don't know why I do that. That source.cpp is good. But anyway, so I'll create the cpp file. And when it's created, I'll start coding for you right in front of you. So I'm going to say include io stream. And I'm going to make mistakes. It's going to be bugs. We're going to sit over here and say, ah, oh, gosh, I cannot fix it. You suggest. So we do everything live in class, OK? I don't like lecturing. I write it for you, and then you'll see what happens, right? If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. We'll try to fix it. If I can't, I'll go home, fix it. I'll put it on GitHub with explanation, OK? So now in here, I'm going to say using namespace std. So first of all, Include IO stream header files don't have .h and C++ anymore. Okay, we have namespaces. Because of that, we don't have it. You don't understand what I'm saying. Just listen to it. Don't worry. Okay. Next thing, using namespace std because this namespace came after what C++ had, they put all the standard stuff in one big namespace. They call it std. So the std namespace is the standard uh, uh, namespace of uh, of uh, C++. If you don't put that one, then you have to write std, column, column, this. std, column, column, that. Instead of keep doing that, I put one using namespace over there, 
and I make my life beautiful. Yes, sir. We'll come to it soon. We'll come to it soon. And when I teach namespaces, probably the next day you're coming in, you'll see when it's needed and when it's not. C++ take, takes care of it pretty nicely. So oh, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. Okay. Now in here, I'm going to say int main, okay? And I'm going to say return. Return zero. And in here, I'm going to say insert to console output, hello, OOP244NBB, okay? And then I'm going to say, ins and then after that, insert a new line, an end line. So that's how object orientation works. We have objects. Objects send messages to each other. I have a C out object that is an object that represents console, console output. I'm going to say, insert this string into the console output, and after that, insert end line, into, end, li end line into it. And I run the program, so no format, shmormat thingy, percent s thingy with printf, we don't do that. I'll do control f5, I run it, and three years later, you'll see that it compiles, and it shows me, hello, OOP, oh, hello, OOP244, yada, yada. We wrote our first program. Okay, so it's, it's one of those things like two plus two is four now. Let's send a missile to ro rocket to Mars. Mars. Okay, <laughs> so, that's, uh, so that's how everything works in C++. Everything is object-oriented. I have seven minutes to start bragging about it to see what object-oriented is, and then we're going to go through it. Okay, what is object orientation? Why? Why the heck we are doing this? We did IPC 144, printf did all the good stuff. We are for functions, life was beautiful. So why do I need to go through all those, through this beep? Why do I need to do that? Okay? Uh, our brains are really amazing machines, like they are the most powerful supercomputer with the worst interface possible which means you have the brain, you cannot access it. You all know that, right? You put that, that key somewhere and you cannot find it. You know in your subconscious somewhere where that key is. You cannot just good, do a good search. So what we need to do, we need to make the thing, the program that we are creating, similar to what we have in real life so our brain can organize it. Never in real life, something like C language happens. I forgot to put it on do not disturb. I'm a bad boy. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, put your cell phones on do not disturb. So by the way, I'm enjoying it so much. You know, after like many days, I see actually faces and talking to you guys. Ah. All right, so what I was saying, yeah. So what do we do? In, uh, I'll give you a very, let me close that door because people are talking out there and I want your attention on this. This is something extremely important that we need to understand. Ugh. I always give that, quest, that, that, give that example uh, in, at the beginning of my OP244 class. I get some laughs and sometimes people say you're crazy, but, but <clears throat> I always say, imagine it's three o'clock in the morning and you're sleeping, dreaming, and you hear, Hello. <laughs> you wake up. You look around. You hear, hello. <laughs> or you hear, wake up. You turn on the light, you hear, wake up. And nobody's there. What do you do? Die. Poo in your pants? <laughs> Why? What happened? What went wrong? What went wrong? Why you're scared? Yes, you have an action without an owner. Correct? That never happens in real life. And that's all you do in C. You say printf. It prints something. Who's printing it? No one. Right? It's some actions that are happening and no one knows where they are coming from. In C++, we change all that. 
if you want something to print something, you create an object called C out, and you tell to C out something should be inserted on your screen. So C out takes care of it. In C++, you create an object called little sister, who's awake at night and scared comes to your room and say, wake up. So you wake up, you see your little sister is over there. So it was sister dot wake up. And you look at it, it's your sister, life is beautiful. That's object orientation. Object orientation is to make your program in a way that it has actors in it. Objects that each one is responsible for something. You give that object's capabilities you need. That's called abstraction. If you are making an object called accountant, or making an object called account, you don't make the, like, what is the color of the door of the bank? You don't do that. You only put deposit, withdraw, and balance. Only the things that you need that account to do, that's abstraction. It means you don't go bananas. You limit yourself to the need of your application. But still, nevertheless, it's an account with a deposit function. Okay? And an account gets created. Now an account knows how to deposit to itself. Now account, an account knows how to withdraw. You don't need to think of what, is, what, what am I going to do? Who's going to reduce the balance? Who's going to. You don't need, you need to do that. You simply create an object, you create proper functionalities, you focus on that function, you implement it, you forget it. Now your object is a hired employee who knows how to do its job. Your main program becomes a manager calling its employees to do their responsibilities in order. First wash the dishes, then give it to the cook, then the cook's going to get the... Cook gets what? Not the food, the ingredients, thank you. Gets the ingredients from the kitchen, and then uh, cook does its magic, food is created, food is given to a server, server gets the order, and, take it, and yada, yada, yada. In main, you create your restaurant, okay? In C++, in C language, writing something like that is humongously difficult because your brain cannot organize it. That's why everything is object oriented now. Everything. Okay? Because you can train an object to do something and forget about it. Our job this semester is to learn how to create those objects, how to learn them, how to get created, how to get destroyed and clean up garbage after themselves. So, when an employee is gone, they clean up their locker and go by themselves. You don't need to worry about the mess that they left behind. So you have to clean it up. That's not going to happen. Or when an employee is hired, they know already what responsibilities they have and how they have to initialize their work. So this is what we are going to do. And for this, we need to know certain aspects of the language, some pillars of object-oriented programming that leads us to the success. And that's going to be our journey. Any questions? Any question one? Any question two? So, have a beautiful day, everyone. See you next time. And let me stop the recording. Thank you. No problem.